Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are back at it again with another draft challenge and is there always a little white gap between the middle red circle and the outer black hook on the Carolina logo? Sure enough there is. Learn something new every day. For today's draft challenge, I will be linking jersey numbers. So let's say I take Nate Mack as my first pick, jersey number 29. That means the next player either has to be number 9 as a single digit or in the 90s. Let's find out which team we will be drafting on behalf of. It is the Arizona Coyotes. We're going to be playing out of a university or college or whatever. Yes! No owner telling me what to do. Fantasy draft will be on Jabroni. Absolutely not. I think I'm going to have draft pick number 17. Let's see how wrong I am. Oh wow, come on now. The only redeemable quality about having a pick this late is that during the rounds that you do have the late pick, there's only four between the first and second. So it's a little bit easier to plan two picks together without having to worry about the other player getting taken. You know what? Sydney the Kidney has been an absolute machine this year. He's 93 overall, jersey number 87. We just gotta find somebody in the 70s. That shouldn't be too hard. So yes. I will be drafting Sid the Kid, baby. Ooh, or I could take Dougie Hamilton and extend the seven streak. Or I could take Brady Kachuk and extend the seven streak. I do also feel that in recent drafts, I've been neglecting goalies for too long, so maybe I should just take a tender? You know what? I'm feeling wacky today. Let's do it. You see what I see. Welcome to the team. Burns is number eight, and so is Wierenski, so what I'm gonna do is probably take Hurdle because he's number 48. He can play the left wing for Sid, and then we could grab one of those defenders. So, actually, I have to do it. I have to pair Crosby and Ovechkin together. It must be done. Ovechkin. He's a left wing, shoots right, obviously likes to play on the offside because he does that whole office thing. You know, that spot on the ice that he owns and people just leave him alone all the time. Yeah, we're just gonna do now and ask questions later. Welcome to the team, Ovi. Can you imagine a first line of Ovechkin, Crosby, and Pavelski? Are they up there in age? Yeah. All right, they're probably gonna be the oldest line in hockey. Because we just drafted Ovi, I need to find someone that's jersey number 81 so that we can make this work. And how about the Conn Smythe winner himself, Jonathan Marcheseau? So this will be amazing for the second line as well because we'll have Hurdle Marcheseau. Wow, you know what? We don't have a single defender yet. We're going offense wins championships, baby. Who did it? Who? You? Absolute rats. As wonderful as Kopitar would be for the second line center. And don't get me wrong, he would be wonderful. Just cannot justify 10 million. This is absolutely perfect. Noah Hannafin, jersey number 15, which yeah, we went with 81 last, so it works. It's only making 1.2 right now, probably because of cap retention and stuff like that from the trade. It doesn't get more ideal than this. I suppose we're gonna remain with five because Colton Pareko, 6.5, 85 overall, and he fits the bill. So here we go. I already have a lot of confidence in this team. I could take Jacob Middleton and just keep riding the five because it seems to be doing all right for us. Another defenseman? Why not? Okay, so Rantanen is a bit of a unique situation I did not account for because he's jersey number 50. So what do you do with a zero? And my first instinct is that we just have to draft a single digit. So anybody with a number below 10, essentially. And you know what? That seems fair to me. So let's go with Ranta and go by that logic. We could definitely get some second line goal scoring from Jeberly here. Jersey number seven, let's sign him up. Still 31 mil of cap space too. That is surprising to me for some reason. But Jake DeBrusque, jersey number 74, will be the next selection. Followed up by number 48, Matt Grizzlick. Note to self. We need to get right-handed defenders because we have three lefties at the moment. Jan Ruda works, 84 and making 2.7, so that should be a good fit for us. Let's get it done. I'm just gonna close out our defense with Justin Schultz, right-handed defender, jersey number four, and that way we just have to draft our third and fourth line. Sounds like a plan to me. 17 mil left, we could probably make this work. Kasperi Kapanen. Yeah, do it. Ask questions later. And JVR, number 21 on a very team-friendly deal. So that is a perfect find for us. Number 19, Jonathan Taves still has 92 face-offs. We are going to win the Stanley Cup. Like, it is just set in stone. 
Just give us the trophy already. Seeing as our cap space is really working for us in this situation, I'm going to go with Ryan Johansson because he's got 85 faceoffs as a fourth line center. We're chilling. Another insane contract that we can afford. Anders Lee, jersey number 27, making 7 mil, and he will be on our fourth line, or maybe third, who even knows? And with our final manual selection of the draft, we will go with Jesper Fast. Look at this team. The only potential downfall, and the only thing I could see that is like, well, is that our highest overall defenseman is 85, but I still feel like the core as a whole is really, really solid. Are you kidding me with this team? Well, how's about we go put the lines together and see what the chemistry's looking like? The regular season is upon us. It is time to edit the lines and see what Arizona is looking like for this season. Okay, plus three on the first line and that's it. A little bit shocked, I can't lie. Or with best lines, we get a plus one here. I think I want Anders Lee to be moved down though because he's a power forward. DeBrusque is a sniper, so I'd rather him be up. Aren't you a sniper as well? Okay, so we could do that. Anders Lee could still be on the fourth line. And I got a crazy one for you. If I move Everly up, it becomes a plus five and this becomes a plus one. So I believe I'm gonna do that. Ooh, we. I am perfectly fine with this offense. We got roll four lines, which is going to be splendid because our fourth line will get the job done. We should have one of the highest face-off winning percentages in the league because we got Crosby with 88, and then we have Hurdle with 87, Jonathan Taves with 92, and Ryan Johansson, 85, but, you know, it's still pretty good. Now, I know our handedness is okay for defense, but let's see what the chemistry is looking like, and oh my goodness, we are not winning a single game this year. Okay, that helps. Call me crazy. Which, you know, you probably already think I am. But I'm moving Preco down so we get a plus two, a plus one, and then this dash one will just have to be here, I guess. And finally, we've got UC Soros as our primary goaltender with Arizona legend, Antti Ranta, backing him up. My prediction is that Crosby gets the most points with 93, his overall. And I say our team gets 49 wins and we make the playoffs. So... Let's get the simulation started. A little bit of a slow start here. Not gonna lie to you. The division is really close at the moment, so hopefully we start to see some separation soon, but not in this way. Can we start winning hockey games, please? I literally don't believe what I'm seeing. I do not believe it. Hold on. Hold on, time out! Well, I mean, they offered it to me. And we're not getting rid of anybody that would have implications with our draft order. Yeah, why not? Propose the trade. Let's go, Toronto. The team doesn't seem to be working with the way I had it. I feel like Duchesne might be a little bit different, but I don't know. Should we just have March or so up there and go for the plus three and the zero? I don't think so. That kind of changes everything. I was going to come here and just do best lines until this happened. So now I'm gonna run with this a little bit longer because I want to see if this changes things. Anders Lee, sure, why not? We'll leave you up here for now. Defense, I'm moving Preco all the way down here just so we can get the 200 instead of having minus. If we're still losing games like this, then I don't know. I guess we just have to go with best lines and pretty much live on a prayer. Yeah, that's four losses. Five losses in a row, even better. Fine, have it your way, jabroni. Head coach preferred lines. Three, zero, zero, one. And defensively, we got plus one, dash two, dash two. Wow, it's awesome. This should work out great. Of course, we win the first two games with Jabroni's lines because why not? Oh yeah, just win them all. Just win the rest of the season, never lose again. I'm in disbelief right now. I don't get how this team sucks. It makes zero sense to me. Jake Gensel's available. Also Pellick, Montour, Couture, Pesci, a lot of good players here. But no, I no. I just want to see if this team can get it done, which so far they haven't. A first, a second, and Couture headed to the Mini Wild in exchange for Pellick, Johnson, and Stenland. And apparently that was the only one. We've been having a lot of trade deadlines with like five or six blockbuster trades going on, but not this time. Am I missing something? Like, did you guys expect this team to be awful? Because whatever just happened right here, I... I'm struggling to make any sense of it. Right. 
That doesn't add up. We finished second last in the division with 77 points, 35, 40, and 7. What a joke. The Floms won the President's Trophy with 109, Boston Bruins 106, same with San Jose. Let's see if it was the top 16 teams that made it. It was not because we've got the 18th place New Jersey Devils and the 17th place Buffalo Sabres sneaking in and Edmonton got shafted. Ovi got us 86 points and Crosby 82, which I expected a lot more. Duchesne actually had 71, which is very solid. Hurdle didn't really do much. I guess 65 points for a second liner isn't bad. Wait, no, was he? He was on the first line. Or no, he wasn't. No, I take it back. He was definitely on the second line. Jake DeBrusque, a dash 27. What are we doing, Jake? Saros didn't even play that bad. I, for some reason, expected him to have like an 800 save percentage, but no, he's got a 910. Three flat GAA? That's not horrible. Maybe it was our defense. I don't know. Something about this team was flawed, though. And the only thing I could think is defense. Jake Ottinger with 46 wins. He had a 908 save percentage and a 301 GAA. See? UC Soros had better stats than him. I mean, barely, but better is better. Holy smokes, Eric Carlson had himself a season with the Seattle Kraken. Nearly 110 points. He could possibly have an Art Ross, but he won't because McDusty got 118 with the Mighty Ducks. So only one player beat him out. That is insanity. Malkin 106, Stamkos and Ranton in 102. Patrick Kane had 49 goals, so no one got to 50 this year. What a weird sim. Tanner Janot with the most fights. Felino 18. I'm pretty sure these guys must have just fought each other a bunch. Sprong had the most game winning goals. That's a little bit surprising, but good for you. And then obviously these two had the most penalty minutes because yeah, that kind of checks out with all the fights you were doing. Today's been one of those days where my brain is just not working. Like I go to say something and then just freeze up or it doesn't get portrayed the way I wanted it to. So there's gonna be a lot of cutting out in this video. Calgary, Toronto, Stanley Cup final, two Canadian teams. Batman would never allow it. You absolute rats. Are you kidding me? I forgot Calgary was the team that took Pavelski from us and they just won the President's Trophy and now they're in the Stanley Cup Final? Also, what does this team have that we don't have? Huh? Tell me that. Let's look at their defense. Oh, they got a 79 overall on the second pair. And then 78. How? I mean, yeah, this could kind of be how. Jake Ottinger. 919 save percentage in the playoffs so far. He's killing it. And the other team in the Stanley Cup final. They brought back Matthew Nyes. And this is their first line. I don't understand this game. And I never will. So new rule. We require a goalie above 90 overall. And then you're just automatically good. Apparently. Let's see who wins the Stanley Cup. We'll go one game at a time here. Toronto is up 2-0 and 3-0. Are they going for a clean sweep? No, Calgary does get a W in there, but it doesn't matter because Toronto still seals the deal. Most likely your Conn Smythe winner and someone that we almost drafted, Brady Kachuk. Sorokin ended up with a 918 save percentage. Ottinger 917, so... They both did phenomenal. Nothing really too crazy going on for defense here, except for Roman Yossi with 17 points in 11 games. What a unit. Team awards, yada, yada, yada. No one cares. Individual trophies. The Art Heart combo is intact this time. Connor McDavid wins both. This is not surprising at all. 100% deserved. Gets the Norris. Lady Bane goes to Kopitar. Another player we could have drafted, didn't. Maddie Beniers. Wow, it is not Bedard this time. Aha. Uh -huh. It hasn't updated yet. I was going to say, this doesn't really seem right because I don't think he's a rookie anymore. But I was kind of just going with the flow. And then I saw this. I was like, well, no. Because you know the whole glitch with be a pro where you could win the Calder in like year 10? Stuff like that. So, I don't know. Anyway, I guess we need to have the official pop-up announcement that Toronto won the cup. Okay. Now we should be chilling. It goes to show you how much I pay attention to the team awards too, because I just went, yeah, 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 whatever. Team awards. Connor McDavid did still get the Art Heart combo, but it was with the Ducks. And EK65 did still get the Norris, but with Seattle. And he also got the Lady Bang. The Calder Memorial goes to Bedsy, yeah. Brady Kachuk did get the Con Smite. The Vesna goes to Flower, and so does the Jennings. Let's go. Zadorov grabs the Bill Masterton, the Jack Adams. Goes to Gove. Matthews with the Selkie Trophy. Another one for McDusty. And last but not least, Patty Kane, the Rocket Richard. Here's your playoff tree. Toronto did not go to seven games once. 
They beat Florida in six. And then after that, it was 5-5-5. Five, five, five. So it was a breeze for them. Which you could tell by looking at their insane roster. Obviously, they were going to win the Stanley Cup. No! Doesn't make any sense! Anyway, um... Yeah, that was that draft. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you could leave a like and subscribe, that would be completely fire. Just like the back of the sea on Calgary's logo. Appreciate you guys as always. If you have draft ideas, suggestions, etc. Comments down below. Let me know if you thought this team was going to be bad for some reason. And I missed something. Or if the simulation engine is just wilding. On that note, I'll see you soon.